works on Sunday afternoon, and then they're off and done at that point in time, and you're not required to like support it for the charity or anything along those lines. <laughs> it's just kind of a one and done. Yes, sir. Uh, could you say that again? What's it called? So it's I called Give it? Camp. Give Camp. Yep. <clears throat> Look up Seattle Give Camp. It's October 26 through 28. And it's Seattle Give Camp, October 26th through 28th. So if you look that up, that's a great idea for an event. Uh, anybody looking for a job or looking to hire folks? Yes, please. Can I come up to the front? Yeah. Wonderful. Come on up. In fact, maybe I'll give you a microphone. Oh, no, no, no. I have lungs. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I do. So I'm says, I need to practice my public speaking skills anyway. That's how okay. people can see me. Hey everyone, my name is Darren Hona. Um, I am a Microsoft employee and I am looking for a different job. I know that's really weird. Um, I have about six years of development experience, .NET stack, done Java, Scala, I've done big data as well. One of the biggest projects I work on right now affects um, all of the enterprise account users for Azure. So these are the customers that pay Azure millions of dollars up front to be like, I want to use your services at a highly discounted rate. Now, if you're spending this much money, you really want to know where your money is going, how it's being used, who's using it, how much you have left. So to give a general idea of where I am in the team is we get all of the big data of all this data um, from our uh, Universal Store team. My team takes the data, mashes it up in different ways, presents it to our downstream team who exposes it via APIs. So I'm in a team called Integration, and that's what I do. I've done this work in both Scala and C Sharp. Um, so yeah, that's me. I am sitting a few hours back. If anyone is interested, I'd love to talk to you because I want a different job. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds good. Who's next? It's a hard act to follow, but anybody else looking for a gig or looking to hire folks? Yes, way over there. Sorry, I was hoping somebody else would go first. This is the middle of the flight. <laughs> uh, my name is Avon, and I just finished up with one of those intensive coding boot camps. It was Coding Dojo over in Bellevue, and I was really, really happy I made the decision. I liked it a lot. It's just endless intellectual challenge. And so we graduated to my fellow students here uh, just about two weeks ago, and I decided to get started. We did C Sharp, Python, and JavaScript, and so I've been learning React outside of that Angular, Node, ASP, Dunn, and Core. And I'm excited for the whiteboard steps because I actually like doing that. So uh, I'll be hanging out. So yeah. Excellent. Anyone else? Not see anybody? I'm going to keep going then. Going, going, gone. Uh, I'm always looking for folks to come and speak at these events. Uh, the standard offer that I kind of make to folks is one of two things. If you'll send me a topic that you're interested in hearing about, send it to chris at kinsman.net. Uh, tell me why you think it's interesting to a room full of .NET developers. I will go ahead and try and find someone to address that topic. Or even better, if you know someone who's a spectacular speaker that might have a topic, uh, drop me their name. I don't need their email address. I can usually track most folks down, and I'll try and track them down and find out if I can get them to come out and speak at this uh, at, at this meetup. Uh, like always looking for ideas. Is really low. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next month, uh, we're doing data access and analytics using uh, USQL, so doing like some Azure Data Lake type of stuff and things along those lines. Uh, Carl Proffman is going to be presenting that. And I am going to now get out of the way and hand it over to Mark to do Essential C Sharp 2018. Thanks, Mr. Chris. Whoa. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Am I loud enough? Yes. yes. I don't want to hold the mic and type in a keyboard. That's a little bit difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and try to speak like this. Uh, my name is Mark Michaelis. I'm over from the east side. In my side of the world, that means Spokane, which is on the other <laughs> side of the state. So I live there. For those of you looking for a job in Spokane, I can help you out. Let me know. Um, I came over for, uh, um, for the night. I'm going to talk with you guys. I'm speaking again tomorrow, and I've got a bunch of meetings going on during the day. Um, I know a little bit about C Sharp. I've written several books, uh, and starting with the beta version of C Sharp back in 2000. Uh, and then I started the Essential C Sharp. Um, I guess it's a series now since I started with two, and now when seven is published, 
Uh, and I'm not yet working on eight, but that's just because it takes a little time to sort of decide, is this eight, eight actually going to happen? You know what's going on? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I'm not working on eight yet because it's not solidified. We're not exactly sure what we're going to go with. And so there's still a fair amount of uncertainty. So that's true. What I'm going to present is not guaranteed to be in the actual 8.0 product. Um, I've actually written quite a bit about C Sharp over the years, and several times I've gone to the team right before I published, and I said, hey, is this it? And they're like, yep, you got it. That's nailed. And then like two weeks later after we published, like, uh, not quite. We kind of cut that, and we added this, and it changed kind of fast. So just expect that what I'm talking about right now is a conversation. But a lot of what's going to happen um, is not necessarily going to be the same as what I present. Uh, I also add or mention that right now, if you're trying to get these bits to work, they won't. <laughs> so it turns out there was a release, we, we all knew this, as, as Visual Studio 15.7. And Visual Studio 15.7 had an add-on that you go ahead and install, and it would allow you to go ahead and compile with the C Sharp 8 uh, bits, mostly with nullable types. It turns out Microsoft then released 15. Um, 8, did I say that? 15.8, it was 15.7 was working, 15.8 was released, and those, new, and those bits no longer work. So you cannot download a copy of Visual Studio uh, 15.7, 2017 15.7. It's not available on the internet, so if you download it, you're going to get 8, and that, those bits are using some um, hidden API or not published API inside Visual Studio that the C-sharp team was taking advantage of in their uh, C-sharp 8 bits, and so it didn't work. So just so you know, what I'm demoing today is not going to work in your computer. So that's just the way it is. I've spent a long time playing with it, but I stopped once 15.8 came out. Um, I did a talk on this about a week ago in Chicago, I think, and the bits came out on Friday, and I presented on Monday, only to discover they no longer work. So, the great thing about bits that no longer work is whatever I show you, you have to believe me, because there's no tax. So that's, that's I, I, like to uh, I like to open this conversation about C-sharp 8 by first asking you guys, what do you want? If you were king or queen and you got to decide what's going to be in the next version of C Sharp, what feature is it? What do you want? Higher order polymorphism. Higher order polymorphism. Yes. Can you be a little bit more specific? Well, type classes. Type classes. Okay. Interesting. Other, other features. Other features that you like to see in C Sharp. Yes. Functional programming support. Functional programming support beyond what we have right now. Do you have a specific thought on what, what are you looking for? Defining methods not in a class. Defining methods not in a class uh, as you could with, for example, C Sharp script. That kind of approach? Like TypeScript or JavaScript. Like JavaScript, okay. Or TypeScript, sure. Okay, got it. Default, implementa default interface implementations or member implementations. That's a possibility. It's really hard technically, but it's possible. Any others? So I like about the Golang feature, so you can compile everything as just one single executable. All you, need to do. you want to be able to compile, compile everything as one single executable, not with dependencies even on .NET. And single module, like you don't want many modules, you want one single executable with the framework in it as well? <laughs> Not just the libraries, you want the framework as well? Um, sure, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the implication being that size is no issue, <laughs> I assume? Size is always issue, right? Well, size is an issue, I guess, is what you're saying, you'd like it to be larger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what's interesting about this question is is generally, and this is sort of true in most of the audiences I speak to, is there's not a lot of, oh, whoa, whoa, we gotta have this. Right, which is a really interesting state to be in a language, is we reflect around, okay, what features do we want? The majority of, majority of us are like, mm, mm, I heard about, but we don't actually have a real world scenario necessarily, a few of you mentioned some, we're like, oh my goodness, this would really change my world. This would really make things different. And, and that's a really great state for us to be in the language. I mean, at the end of the day, I can talk about C Sharp 8, but the fact that none of us are demanding and saying, oh, we gotta have, 
allows us to reflect and say, it's a pretty good language to be programming in. And even after, you know, 18 years, plus or minus, around 18 years, it's still in a pretty good state. And the language team has been, gr we're grateful for the language team's discipline and not just adding whatever feature some whim, you know, would prefer to have. Right? That's a good thing. So, so that, that's a good thing to state about the language. Um, okay. So, we did that. <laughs> I want to talk about nullable, nullable reference types, which is the main feature that's, that's being considered. I want to be careful about the language here. The main feature that's being considered for C Sharp 8. And now, if you look at the title of my slide, nullable reference types, you should all be really questioning whether Mark should get to continue to speak at an event on C Sharp, because most of us have had nullable reference types since version C Sharp 1.0. So what the heck are we doing and saying in C-sharp 8, we're going to give you nullable reference types? That don't make no sense. And it turns out we have some problems in the language. And yes, I, I truly believe that is the case. That in spite of the fact that we're all really comfortable, it turns out we've just learned to tolerate and put up with the warts in a way that we generally don't notice them. But one of the biggest warts we have is it is never okay to have a null reference exception unless you are writing the .NET framework. <clears throat> in other words, every single time a null reference exception occurs in your code, it is a bug. And yet, we go ahead and make reference types default to null, meaning we have to take action to ensure that no null reference type, no null reference exception is thrown. So we are defaulting you to do the wrong thing. By default, you declare a reference type. You may or may not assign it, but it is set up to cause a null reference exception by default. And that means you're falling into doing the wrong thing. And we need to somehow change the language so you fall into doing the right thing. What we would like is that null reference exceptions do not occur unless you say, trust me, I'm a programmer, I know what you're doing, and you're wrong. <laughs> the problem is, there's a fair amount of C-sharp code out there. And if we decide to change reference types to not allow null, most of your code will 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 barf when you compile it. <laughs> and not just that, we have errors such as um, this variable has not been set inside a local member. If there's a local variable and it's not set and we dereference it inside that member without setting it, we go ahead and issue a compiler warning to say, hey, this is not being set. We think you should set it. Are you sure? And inevitably, in our wisdom, we will go assign that variable a value. And since we can't think of anything else, we go and assign the variable null. <coughs> Brilliant. <laughs> right? So we've now gone ahead and signed a reference type, a value of null, setting us up that when we dereference it, we'll get a null reference exception, unless we take action to check that it's not null before we dereference it. So it's all very well for me to say, okay, well, let's just change the language. Yet there's this great operator that we introduced in, in uh, C Sharp 2 called the question mark operation operator or the nullable operator, where we go and take an integer or a value type and we follow it with a question mark, and automatically that becomes a nullable value type. So we decorate with a question mark, and that means it's nullable. So if we take string, and we decorate it with a question mark, it is now not null. Well, that doesn't work. That's going to be a little confusing. So we somehow need to change the language to make it so that when we go ahead and add an attribute onto a reference type, we can say not null. But whatever we do, it's going to be opposite to the way that value types work. 
because value types out of the box cannot be null. So we can't introduce the question mark operator because the question mark operator would be saying the opposite of what it means when we use a va uh, value type. What we need to instead do is maybe introduce another operator. How about an exclamation point? Okay, so now we've got reference types that are null or maybe not null when they're just string. We've got reference types that are not null when they're exclamations and we got, wait, and we got I don't know. Like the string, if you just wrote string, is that an I don't know type? It may or may not be null. May or not, maybe, may or may not allow null. I don't know. So it turns out that what we really want to do is we want to change the language so radically that we get all of your code to no longer compile. <laughs> well, that's not a very good idea. And what I'm trying to describe is that we believe there's a, stra a problem in the language. There is a problem in the language. We need to correct it. But to change the language, we need to change string to be not null and string question mark to allow null. And that is a major change to the language that will affect all of our code. Well, except for those of you who don't program with reference types. Everyone else it would affect. Questions? Yes? So on your last vote, you say there's no way to decorate parameters to not allow null. There's been some attempts, like code contracts. Do you want to like, talk so about that? The question, so I make the statement that right now the problem in the language is we can't go ahead and decorate attributes to not be null. And there has, there has been approaches of doing this with contracts um, that came out, I don't know, maybe six, seven, I don't know, a long time ago, <laughs> that really never got popularized. Um, and is not part of .NET Core, at least to my knowledge, it's not included in .NET Core. Um, and really, the, the problem was it, was, it was relying on, I think, attribute-based programming mm -hmm. to, for the most part, which is never part of C-sharp for some legitimate reasons, uh, and, and yes, we fixed the problems, which we haven't figured out how to do. Um, so, so contracts was an attempt to solve the same problem, but never really got popularized, and certainly was never a... Um, done in a way that we could prevent the, allow the language to progress without breaking it, right? Some of the biggest concerns were if we introduced that, we didn't quite get, a, get it right, are we going to set ourselves up for a bad language or a difficult to maintain language in the future? So contracts right now is, I mean, I'm not saying don't use it, but it's certainly not part of .NET Core and it's not included as part of the language feature itself. So it's only implemented if you can do it either through IL weaving or through, through, through C Sharp. Um, but, but what we're really saying is, this is a fundamental principle, not so far as we need contracts, but surely we should be able to decorate our parameters and say, don't allow null. So if you pass us something with null, you can give you a warning or a compile error, uh, a compile time error at, at uh, compile time, and presumably reduce the likelihood that we have a problem at runtime. Other, other comments or questions? Do we all appreciate the magnitude of the difficulty? <laughs> Yes, good. So here's, here's what we need what to do what to do about. We need to provide a syntax to expect null, which is different than a syntax to not be null. And why are we saying we're calling this feature nullable reference types is we want to change the meaning of string to be not null and string question mark to allow null. And so we want to go ahead and introduce a syntax that allows you to expect null, and by default, it is not null. Make sense? Next, we want to provide reference types to expect null. We need to give you a way to go ahead and say, no, this one's not null by default. If I just do string, it's by default. <coughs> Let's give you a syntax to expect a nullable. So we got a syntax that we wanted to change the definition of string, the meaning of it, to not be null, not allow nulls and introduce the question mark to allow nulls. The result is that we decrease the occurrence of reference exceptions, and we could also enable static flow analysis to say if you dereference something that was declared simply as string, which is not nullable, we can let you know that you're likely going to have a problem. We can't guarantee it. There may be another thread that comes in and changes the value of the property. 
It is not possible for us to do static analysis that guarantees a value will or will not be null. But we can certainly improve it. If you check for null, right before you dereference, we can say there's a good chance that we don't need to tell you to go that, that this could be nullable, even if you didn't set it, because you checked. And so we can do static analysis in the code to say, hey, wait a second, you checked for null, even though this is a nullable reference type, let's, let's not worry about it. Big enough? Yes? <clears throat> I want to start by, by showing you this um, type, let's see if this works, this type address, and you'll notice that address has a street 2 on it, even though we don't use it. So right here, we set up as address as number 10, number 10 Downing Street, we set street 1, city, zip, and country, but we did not set street 2, even though there is a value street 2. Next, I go ahead and write a test. And in this test, I go ahead and say, is, what is the length of street 2? And since this test passes, we know what? It's going to throw a null reference exception. And the reason it passes is because we have an attribute on this that says expect a null reference exception. Okay, so this test passes because we said null reference exception. I then can go ahead and say, hey, if the street is null, then simply go ahead and return, which is the code I wrote earlier. Or I can go and assert, if I put a question mark and do a dot length, then I'm saying, hey, I've handled 